Law 12, fouls and misconduct. Direct and indirect free kicks and penalty kicks can only be awarded for offences committed when the ball is in play. 1. Direct free kick. A direct free kick is awarded if a player commits any of the following offences against an opponent in a manner considered by the referee to be careless, reckless or using excessive force. Charges. Jumps at. Kicks or attempts to kick. Pushes. Strikes or attempts to strike, including headbutt. Tackles or challenges. Trips or attempts to trip. If an offence involves contact, it is penalised by a direct free kick. Careless is when a player shows a lack of attention or consideration when making a challenge or acts without precaution. No disciplinary sanction is needed. Reckless is when a player acts with disregard to the danger to or consequences for an opponent and must be shown a yellow card. Using excessive force is when a player exceeds the necessary use of force and or endangers the safety of an opponent and must be sent off. A direct free kick is awarded if a player commits any of the following offences. A handball offence, except for the goalkeeper within their penalty area. Holds an opponent. Impedes an opponent with contact. Bites or spits at someone on the team lists or a match official. Throws an object at the ball, an opponent or a match official. Or makes contact with the ball with a held object. Refer also to offences in Law 3. Handling the ball. For the purposes of determining handball offences, the upper boundary of the arm is in line with the bottom of the armpit. Not every touch of a player's hand or arm with the ball is an offence. It is an offence if a player deliberately touches the ball with their hand or arm, for example moving the hand or arm towards the ball. It is an offence if a player touches the ball with their hand or arm when it has made their body unnaturally bigger. A player is considered to have made their body unnaturally bigger when the position of their hand or arm is not a consequence of, or justifiable by, the player's body movement for that specific situation. By having their hand or arm in such a position, the player takes a risk of their hand or arm being hit by the ball and being penalised. It is an offence if a player scores in the opponent's goal directly from their hand or arm, even if accidental, including by the goalkeeper, or scores in the opponent's goal immediately after the ball has touched their hand or arm, even if accidental. The goalkeeper has the same restrictions on handling the ball as any other player outside the penalty area. If the goalkeeper handles the ball inside their penalty area when not permitted to do so, an indirect free kick is awarded, but there is no disciplinary sanction. However, if the offence is playing the ball a second time, with or without the hand or arm, after a restart and before it touches another player, the goalkeeper must be sanctioned if the offence stops a promising attack or denies an opponent or the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Indirect free kick. An indirect free kick is awarded if a player plays in a dangerous manner, impedes the progress of an opponent without any contact being made, is guilty of dissent, using offensive, insulting or abusive language and or actions, or other verbal offences prevents the goalkeeper from releasing the ball from the hands or kicks or attempts to kick the ball when the goalkeeper is in the process of releasing it, initiates a deliberate trick for the ball to be passed, including from a free kick or goal kick to the goalkeeper with the head, chest, knee, etc. to circumvent the law whether or not the goalkeeper touches the ball with the hands. The goalkeeper is penalised if responsible for initiating the deliberate trick, commits any other offence not mentioned in the laws for which play is stopped to caution. An indirect free kick is also awarded if a player commits any other offence not mentioned in the laws for which play is stopped to show a yellow card or send off a player. An indirect free kick is awarded if the goalkeeper, inside their penalty area, commits any of the following offences. Controls the ball with a hand or arm for more than six seconds before releasing it. Touches the ball with a hand or arm after releasing it and before it has touched another player touches the ball with a hand or arm unless the goalkeeper has clearly kicked or attempted to kick the ball to release it into play after it has been deliberately kicked to the goalkeeper by a teammate or after receiving it directly from a throw-in taken by a teammate. A goalkeeper is considered to be in control of the ball with the hands when the ball is between the hands or between the hand and any surface, for example the ground, their own body, or by touching with any part of the hands or arms except if the ball rebounds from the goalkeeper 
or the goalkeeper has made a save. The goalkeeper is also considered to be in control of the ball with the hands when holding the ball in the outstretched open hand or bouncing it on the ground or throwing it in the air. A goalkeeper cannot be challenged by an opponent when in control of the ball with a hand or hands. Playing in a dangerous manner. Playing in a dangerous manner is any action that, while trying to play the ball, threatens injury to somebody, including the player themselves, and includes preventing a nearby opponent from playing the ball for fear of injury. A scissors or bicycle kick is permissible, provided that it is not dangerous to an opponent. Impeding the progress of an opponent without contact. Impeding the progress of an opponent means moving into the opponent's path to obstruct, block, slow down or force a change of direction when the ball is not within playing distance of either player. All players have a right to their position on the field of play. Being in the way of an opponent is not the same as moving into the way of an opponent. A player may shield the ball by taking a position between an opponent and the ball if the ball is within playing distance and the opponent is not held off with the arms or body. If the ball is within playing distance, the player may be fairly charged by an opponent. 3. Disciplinary action. The referee has the authority to take disciplinary action from entering the field of play for the pre match inspection until leaving the field of play after the match ends, including penalties. If, before entering the field of play at the start of the match, a player or team official commits a sending off offence, the referee has the authority to prevent the player or team official taking part in the match, as outlined in Law 3.6. The referee will report any other misconduct. A player or team official who commits a yellow card or sending off offence, either on or off the field of play, is disciplined according to the offence. The yellow card communicates a caution, and the red card communicates a sending off. Only a player, substitute, substituted player, or team official may be shown the red or yellow card. The following points relate to players, substitutes, and substituted players. Delaying the restart of play to show a card. Once the referee has decided to send off or show a yellow card to a player, the player must not be restarted until the sanction has been administered unless the non-offending team takes a quick free kick, has a clear goal-scoring opportunity and the referee has not started the disciplinary sanction procedure. The sanction is administered at the next stoppage. If the offence was denying the opposing team an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, the player is shown a yellow card. If the offence interfered with or stopped a promising attack, the player is not shown a yellow card. Advantage If the referee plays the advantage for an offence for which a yellow card or sending off would have resulted had play been stopped, this yellow card or sending off must be issued when the ball is next out of play. However, if the offence was denying the opposing team an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, the player is shown a yellow card for unsporting behaviour. If the offence was interfering with or stopping a promising attack, the player is not shown a yellow card. Advantage should not be applied in situations involving serious foul play, violent conduct or a second yellow card offence unless there is a clear opportunity to score a goal. The referee must send off the player when the ball is next out of play. But if the player plays the ball or challenges or interferes with an opponent, the referee will stop play, send off the player and restart with an indirect free kick unless the player committed a more serious offence. If a player starts holding an opponent outside the penalty area and continues holding inside the penalty area, the referee must award a penalty kick. Yellow card offences. A player is shown a yellow card if guilty of delaying the restart of play, dissent by word or action, entering, re-entering or deliberately leaving the field of play without the referee's permission, failing to respect the required distance when play is restarted with a drop ball, corner kick, free kick or throw in, Persistent offences, but no specific number or pattern of offences constitutes persistent. Unsporting behaviour. Entering the referee review area. Excessively using the review TV screen signal. A substitute or substituted player is shown a yellow card if guilty of delaying the restart of play, dissent by word or action, entering or re entering the field of play without the referee's permission, unsporting behaviour entering the referee review area, excessively using the review TV screen signal. Where two separate yellow card offences are committed, even in close proximity, 
they should result in two yellow cards. For example, if a player enters the field of play without the required permission and commits a reckless tackle or stops a promising attack with a foul, handball, etc. Yellow cards for unsporting behaviour. There are different circumstances when a player must be shown a yellow card for unsporting behaviour, including if a player attempts to deceive the referee, e.g. by feigning injury or pretending to have been fouled, also known as simulation, changes places with the goalkeeper during play, or without the referee's permission, as outlined in Law 3, commits in a reckless manner a direct free-kick offence, handles the ball to interfere with or stop a promising attack, commits any other offence which interferes with or stops a promising attack, except where the referee awards a penalty kick for an offence which was an attempt to play the ball or a challenge for the ball, denies an opponent an obvious goal-scoring opportunity by committing an offence which was an attempt to play the ball or a challenge for the ball, and the referee awards a penalty kick, handles the ball in an attempt to score a goal, whether or not the attempt is successful, or in an unsuccessful attempt to prevent a goal, makes unauthorised marks on the field of play, plays the ball when leaving the field of play after being given permission to leave, shows a lack of respect for the game, initiates a deliberate trick for the ball to be passed, including from a free kick or goal kick to the goalkeeper, with the head, chest, knee, etc. to circumvent the law whether or not the goalkeeper touches the ball with the hands. The goalkeeper is shown a yellow card if responsible for initiating the deliberate trick. Verbally distracts an opponent during play or at a restart. Celebration of a goal. Players can celebrate when a goal is scored, but the celebration must not be excessive. Choreographed celebrations are not encouraged and must not cause excessive time-wasting. Leaving the field of play to celebrate a goal is not a yellow card offence, but the player should return as soon as possible. A player must be shown a yellow card, even if the goal is disallowed, for climbing onto a perimeter fence and or approaching the spectators in a manner which causes safety and or security issues, acting in a provocative, derisory or inflammatory way, covering the head or face with a mask or other similar item, removing the shirt or covering the head with the shirt, Delaying the restart of play. Referees must show a yellow card to players who delay the restart of play by appearing to take a throw in but suddenly leaving it to a teammate to take, delaying leaving the field of play when being substituted, excessively delaying a restart, kicking or carrying the ball away, or provoking a confrontation by deliberately touching the ball after the referee has stopped play, taking a free kick from the wrong position to force a retake, sending off offences. A player, substitute or substituted player who commits any of the following offences is sent off, denying the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal-scoring opportunity by a handball offence except a goalkeeper within their penalty area, denying a goal or an obvious goal-scoring opportunity to an opponent whose overall movement is towards the opponent's goal by an offence punishable by a free kick unless as outlined later. Serious foul play. Biting or spitting at someone violent conduct, using offensive, insulting or abusive language and or actions, receiving a second yellow card in the same match, entering the video operation room. A player, substitute or substituted player who has been sent off must leave the vicinity of the field of play and the technical area. Denying a goal or an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, also known as dog so. Where a player commits an offence against an opponent within their own penalty area, which denies an opponent an obvious goal-scoring opportunity and the referee awards a penalty kick, the offender is shown a yellow card if the offence was an attempt to play the ball or a challenge for the ball. In all other circumstances, for example holding, pulling, pushing, no possibility to play the ball, etc., the offending player must be sent off. Where a player denies the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal-scoring opportunity by a handball offence, the player is sent off wherever the offence occurs except a goalkeeper within their penalty area. A player, sent-off player, substitute or substituted player who enters the field of play without the required referee's permission and interferes with play or an opponent and denies the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal-scoring opportunity is guilty of a sending-off offence. The following must be considered. Distance between the offence and the goal, general direction of play, likelihood of keeping or gaining control of the ball, location and number of defenders. 
serious foul play, a tackle or challenge that endangers the safety of an opponent or uses excessive force or brutality must be sanctioned as serious foul play. Any player who lunges at an opponent in challenging for the ball from the front, from the side or from behind using one or both legs with excessive force or endangers the safety of an opponent is guilty of serious foul play. Violent conduct. Violent conduct is when a player uses or attempts to use excessive force or brutality against an opponent when not challenging for the ball or against a teammate, team official, match official, spectator or any other person regardless of whether contact is made. In addition, a player who when not challenging for the ball deliberately strikes an opponent or any other person on the head or face with the hand or arm is guilty of violent conduct unless the force used was negligible. The following relates to team officials. Where an offence is committed by someone from the technical area, a substitute, substituted player, sent-off player or team official, and the offender cannot be identified, the senior team coach present in the technical area will receive the sanction. Warning. The following offences should usually result in a warning. Repeated or blatant offences should result in a yellow card or sending off. Entering the field of play in a respectful or non-confrontational manner. Failing to cooperate with a match official, for example ignoring an instruction or a request from an assistant referee or the fourth official. Minor or low-level disagreement, by word or action, with a decision. Occasionally leaving the confines of the technical area without committing another offence. Yellow card. Yellow card offences include, but are not limited to, clearly or persistently not respecting the confines of their team's technical area, delaying the restart of play by their team, deliberately entering the technical area of the opposing team in a non-confrontational way, dissent by word or action including throwing or kicking drinks bottles or other objects, actions which show a clear lack of respect for the match officials, for example sarcastic clapping entering the referee review area, excessively or persistently gesturing for a red or yellow card, excessively showing the TV signal for a VAR review, acting in a provocative or inflammatory manner, persistent unacceptable behaviour, including repeated warning offences, showing a lack of respect for the game. Sending off. Sending off offences include, but are not limited to, delaying the restart of play by the opposing team, for example, holding on to the ball, kicking the ball away, obstructing the movement of a player. Deliberately leaving the technical area to show dissent towards or remonstrate with a match official, or deliberately leaving the technical area to act in a provocative or inflammatory manner. Entering the opposing technical area in an aggressive or confrontational manner. Deliberately kicking or throwing an object onto the field of play. Entering the field of play to confront a match official including at half-time or full-time, or to interfere with play, an opposing player or a match official. Entering the video operation room. Physical or aggressive behaviour, including spitting or biting, towards an opposing player, substitute, team official, match official, spectator, or any other person, for example a ball boy or ball girl, security or competition official, etc. Receiving a second yellow card in the match using offensive, insulting or abusive language and or actions, using unauthorised electronic or communication equipment and or behaving in an inappropriate manner as a result of using electronic or communication equipment. Violent conduct. Offences where an object or the ball is thrown. In all cases, the referee takes the appropriate disciplinary action. Reckless. Show a yellow card to the offender for unsporting behaviour using excessive force, sent off the offender for violent conduct. 4. Restart of play after fouls and misconduct. If the ball is out of play, play is restarted according to the previous decision. If the ball is in play and a player commits a physical offence inside the field of play against an opponent, an indirect or direct free kick or penalty kick is awarded. If the offence is against a teammate, substitute, substituted or sent off player, team official or a match official, it is a direct free kick or penalty kick. All verbal offences are penalised with an indirect free kick.
If the referee stops play from an offence committed by a player inside or outside the field of play against an outside agent, play is restarted with a dropped ball unless an indirect free kick is awarded for leaving the field of play without the referee's permission. The indirect free kick is taken from the point on the boundary line where the player left the field of play. If, when the ball is in play, a player commits an offence against a match official or an opposing player, substitute, substituted or sent-off player or team official outside the field of play, or a substitute, substituted or sent-off player or team official commits an offence against or interferes with an opposing player or match official outside the field of play, players restarted with a free kick on the boundary line nearest to where the offence or interference occurred. For direct free kick offences, a penalty kick is awarded if this is within the offender's penalty area. If an offence is committed outside the field of play by a player against a player, substitute, substituted player or team official of their own team, players restarted with an indirect free kick on the boundary line closest to where the offence occurs. If a player makes contact with the ball with an object, like a boot, shin guard, etc., held in the hand, players restarted with a direct free kick or penalty kick. If a player who is on or off the field of play throws or kicks an object other than the match ball at an opposing player, or throws or kicks an object including a ball at an opposing substitute, substituted or sent off player, team official or a match official, or the match ball, players restarted with a direct free kick from the position where the object struck or would have struck the person or the ball. If this position is off the field of play, the free kick is taken on the nearest point on the boundary line. A penalty kick is awarded if this is within the offender's penalty area. If a substitute, substituted or sent off player, player temporarily off the field of play, or team official, throws or kicks an object onto the field of play and it interferes with play, an opponent or match official, players restarted with a direct free kick or penalty kick where the object interfered with play or struck or would have struck the opponent, match official or the ball.